We often get asked, what's the difference between different types of bike? A downhill bike, an enduro bike, a trail bike, or a cross country bike? So today I've got all four bikes lined up. I'm gonna take a look at them, show you the differences in the details of bikes, what they're good at, and actually take them up onto the hill to try and show you that, put a few times in, and maybe suffer a little bit on the way up. So here's the difference in all the bikes. Let's start with a cross country bike. They can be hardtails or full suspension bikes. This is a Canyon Lux. Uh, normal cross country bikes are between 80 and 120 mil of travel. Uh, this is 100 mil with 110 fork up front, just to stack things out a slight bit. But cross country bikes, as the name suggests, are all about going cross country fast. So being fast, efficient climbers. A lot of them are carbon fiber. They're designed to be efficient and lightweight. So lots of carbon fiber on these bikes. And also the angles are designed to being able to go up quickly as well. So fairly steep head angle and seat tube, uh, a longer stem to keep the weight balanced on the bike. Normally 29ers. As you move along the line towards the downhill bike, the differences you'll really start to notice are mainly in the suspension travel, so it will go up along the line, but also the geometry of things will change slightly uh, between them. So this is what I'd call a trail bike, my new proof reactor. Trail bikes, again, can be hardtails or full suspension, probably more commonly full suspension bikes these days. And the travel for a trail bike is anywhere really between 110 mil up to 150 mil of travel. Again, 27.5 or 29er. You do see the sort of trend, like, I guess, going towards 29er wheels for these bikes. This reactor does have 140 mil uh, front and rear, and you'll see the geometry thing starts to change a little bit. It's slightly more slack uh, than the cross country bike with the head angle. So able to ride more aggressive stuff more easily, but still a really efficient all round bike. Trail bikes really tend to be either aluminium frames or carbon, sort of a split, I would say. Some cross country bikes have fixed seat posts, but a lot of people are running a drop post on there these days. Same with the trail bikes and the enduro bikes. Up to the enduro bike, now we're seeing travel increase again. So suspension on these bikes, anywhere really between 140 to 180 on the rear. Uh, this is my Pole Stamina 180. It's not your average enduro bike to be fair. It's definitely one of the more progressive brands. So you'll see it looks super slack on the front, head angle about 63 degrees, steep seat angle. Now this bike is all about making some good time down the hill because that's how enduro races are timed. But it's still got to be a decent climber. You've got to get back to the top of the hill, saving energy and quick. So that's what this seat angle is designed around. It's be an efficient bike, but it's a big hitter designed to go down the hill as fast as possible. This bike's a 29er, but again, enduro bikes, you're seeing still some 27.5 and mixed wheel sizes in, in this type of bike as well, where you've got a 29er at the front, 27.5 at the back. You'll see bigger brakes, bigger tyres, heavier bikes compared to trail bikes. Most downhill bikes are in or around 200 millimetres of travel and these are all about one thing really, going downhill as fast as possible. So you'll see they have a fixed seat post, you know, you don't need to get the post up uh, high for these, you just need to be standing up cranking in a downhill race. You'll see in aluminium or carbon frames, but I guess aluminium sort of coming back to the fore with these bikes, even wheels and uh, bars, probably more common on downhill bikes than you'd expect. Big difference at the front is these big triple clamp forks. So triple clamps, you've got one clamp down there, two, three. Big, stiff, strong, 200 mil of travel on these forks. Uh, just really uh, built to take the abuse of racing downhill. You've got a slack head tube on there, so great for the high speed tracks. Bars are starting to come up all the way along the row as well. Downhill bike bars are nice and high because this really is you know, designed to be ridden downhill. So you want your weight to sort of be tipped back behind the bike. You've got the strongest, grippiest tires, which will roll pretty slowly, but it's all about gripping the trail. So these aren't really made for going up hills at all. Downhill bikes, all about the big grippy tires and the big brakes for super power to stop these things. This is my new proof descent. It's a 27.5 bike, is available on 29 as well. So we are seeing different riders using different wheel sizes, plus mixed wheel sizes, pretty popular with the racers nowadays. I've got a coil shock on the back of this bike, which is great for the small bump sensitivity, really supple in that first part of the stroke. But downhill racers are still using a mix of the two, really, coil and air. This is the heaviest bike of the four and not designed for going uphill. Well, there's lots to talk about with the variety of bikes and they look quite different too, but let's take the two extremes and let's take them to the trail, the cross country bike and the other end, the downhill bike, and see actually what a difference is when you ride them. 
race one. Wow, we're at the bottom of the hill. So it is, of course, to the top. Uh, first, I'm on the cross country bike. I expect this to be the fastest, of course, it's the lightest, it's the most efficient. The hill's not massive, so it's a, an all out 100% effort drag race, no technical stuff to the top of the hill. Well, it's off the line quick already. Feels so light and efficient, this bike. Uh, I'm actually going to lock out my suspension as well. That's going to help me a little bit. Right, now to the hill climb on a downhill bike. I'm not really sure I want to do this. In fact, I'm sure I don't want to do this. It's going to be horrendous. Uh, obviously, I've got a fixed seat post, no dropper. It's very low. And I've got a 1024 seven speed cassette. So 24 is my easiest gear, the 36 ring. It's heavy. It's going to be horrendous. I think I'm going to be at least a minute slower. But right, here goes nothing. So way slower, up the hill, 28 seconds on the downhill bike. You'd expect the trail bike and enduro bike to be much closer. I would expect them to be uh, still slower than a cross country bike up the hill, but much closer because they are designed to go uphill as well. Whereas downhill bike just isn't. But where these bikes are amazing, of course, it's on a proper rough technical downhill track. If you've never ridden a downhill bike on a proper downhill track, then you're missing out because they're amazing machines. Um, they are so confidence inspiring. So this is where, like even if you're not pushing the limit of the bike, you'll just find yourself faster. On a downhill bike, on a downhill track, it just feels safer to go faster on a downhill bike. So I'm looking forward to it. I haven't got full downhill kit. Got my open face lid on, so I'm gonna go steady because like I say, you can go quick on these things, but I'm gonna be careful. But it's time to really let this bike shine. really planted, big triple up. And it's really, the difference in grip is the biggest thing with the tires. Just some edging tires out there. Yeah, like I said, it's greasy out. Jumps have to work a little bit harder, especially flatter jumps. The bike wants to suck up and take it. Ah, oh, there we go. The dino bike. Come on, a faithful cross country bike. Show me a bit of speed. Whoa, some big hits there. Well, the only tell already is bike. <laughs> well, <laughs> there you go, riding a cross country bike down a hill, well, down a downhill track. He's asking a bit too much of it sometimes, especially the tyres. This bike is lightweight. What I was just about to say was it feels like it's got hardly any travel and it's soft because it's 110mm, 400mm on the back. 
and it's not set up for ragging down downhill tracks like this. Already bottomed the fork, and now I've uh, ripped the back tire on a rock. So it's a DNF for the cross country bike down the hill. Well, that was good fun to ride back down. Uh, remind myself just how good these things are. I'd never want to pedal one of these things back uphill ever again, though. That was horrendous. But it does remind me sort of how much, you know, bikes from the enduro bike down to cross-country bike, they can be tweaked to really suit the conditions. Yes, my cross-country bike didn't quite make it to the bottom of the hill, but it's running the lightest cross-country race tyres possible on super stiff, lightweight carbon rims. So I could have changed those, and that bike really, you know, the characteristics of that bike really changed. Same with trail and enduro bikes. You can change things on those bikes and really make them suit where you ride. Whereas something like this is such a specialist tool that a downhill bike really is just only good at one thing. But the rest of the sort of spectrum of mountain bikes can really be tweaked to make them work for wherever you ride and the type of uh, stuff you like to do. So anyway, I think it's time for a sit down. Give us a thumbs up if you like watching me ride different types of bike.